One of the biggest frustrations for dog parents is grooming their dog. I'm sure you've seen those videos on social media of dogs going wild when their parents try to clip their nails or groom their fur or brush them because they're scared. That can be a really scary situation for dogs, but I have three dogs and not a single one of them stresses or fusses over being groomed and I do all the grooming myself. I do not go to a professional groomer. Now that said, I am not a professional groomer, so if you're trying to learn how to groom them, properly. I am not the person. Go look for a professional groomer. I'm showing you how I trained my puppies and I got them ready to groom before they were ready to be groomed. Now, most puppies do not need to be groomed. Their fur is still growing in. They're still growing into their bodies. In fact, with a lot of breeds, you're not supposed to trim their hair before a certain age because it can mess up how their hair grows. So do your research on your own breed. For English runner Spaniels, it's supposed to be over a year before they get their first haircut. But you can still, in that time, get them ready to do this. You are going to have to maintain their nails. You're going to have to get them ready to be around razors and scissors and make sure they're not scared or jerking their paws away or struggling with you because we don't want your dog hurt and we don't want you hurt either. So this went back to the very first day I brought these puppies into my house. And I've done this for all of my dogs. I've owned many dogs in my lifetime. I will start off by brushing them. And so we don't want to use a real dog brush. That's not going to serve anybody. I want you to go to the store and get baby brushes, teeny tiny little soft combs and soft bristle brushes. In fact, I don't even use this one right away. I start with this. So this is just an easy, soft bristle little brush. And when they're sitting in my lap, when they're resting, I will just go over their fur with this. This is just to get them used to the motions, the sensations. And it feels, it's gentle. It's nice. It's kind of like their mom licking them. So it's kind of that combination of soothing for your dog, but also getting them ready to be groomed. So I start off with this. I do this frequently. Whenever they're resting in my lap and it's within, within reach, I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to start doing that. So they start to get a little bit older. I'll also introduce the comb, kind of just go through their fur. You're not untangling anything. You're not really getting any of their undercoat out because they don't have that yet. And so this is just, again, about the sensations, just getting them used to the movements, getting them used to how you're going to have to hold them and how you're going to have to move them in order to groom them. Go over their paws, go over their back, gently brush their ears. You're just very gently going to use these baby tools on your puppy to get them used to the process and the sensations. As they get older, you're going to move to more sturdy equipment. So now they're going to start to feel the metal combs. They're going to start to feel the heavier brushes with the different metal bristles. Those things are when they get older, their fur comes in, but you're getting them used to the sensations and process. Now in process, I'm talking about having them stand and doing it, having them lay down and doing it, flipping them over on their backs and doing their tummies, holding up their paws. Anything that you could potentially need to do when they're older is what you're teaching them how to tolerate and feel comfortable with now. The more you do it as a baby, the easier it gets because they're already used to that process. But that's not where we stop. We also want to make sure we're leaning into the other aspects of this. The most important one for me, I feel, was working with a razor because I do have to clean their paw pads, especially with English Springer Spaniels, those things grow. And if you are in terrain where it could be muddy, where there's debris, where there's snow, or especially ice, you got to maintain those paw pads. You also want to make sure you're cleaning up the tops of their feet. We don't want, as they call them, the little Grinch toes. And then in the future, you are going to have to groom the rest of their coats because especially with English Spanish Spaniels, they're going to have the long ears. They are going to have longer fur depending on how their tail is docked. That's going to be needing or you're going to need to maintain that as well. And then more sensitive regions as well as they get older, you're going to need to clean some of that up depending on what your dog is like. So you just want to make sure that they're ready for this. And razors can be terrifying. Now you can use scissors. If you're going to use scissors, get them used to the sound of scissors. You're just going to take a pair of scissors and you're going to snip it, not near them, far away so they can get used to it. And then you're going to get closer and closer. You're not going to clip anything, but you want to make sure that you have scissors near them so that they're comfortable with what you're doing. And you're going to lift up their fur as if you were going to cut it and cut it in the air a few inches away so that again, we develop a tolerance to those sensations, the sights and the sounds of what's happening with the scissors. But the razor is something that really I leaned heavily into. 
So I got razors. I have one for my the dogs I lost earlier this year. So I have a big razor. They haven't seen that one yet because my girls are only a few months old. They're getting to that point. But this they've seen since like the first week that they were in this house. And so I've let them explore this. They've been able to sniff it. I don't let them near the edge of the razor. Although this this one, I have a video on this. If you like this, I've got other videos, review videos on the channel. I uh, highly recommend this one. It is low volume. There's two speeds. And I've I've actually run it over my skin in an attempt to like, can I accidentally cut myself or can I accidentally cut my dog? Yeah, it doesn't hurt me. So it, it also doesn't hurt them. There's some kind of protective measures here as well. Um, but this is really good for dogs. It's specifically for dog paw pads, um, ears like around their nose and on their face. So this is a good one for you to get if you want it. And so I started by letting them see it, letting them play with it. I kind of like left it on the floor and let them explore it. I held it for them. And then without being too close to them, I would turn it on for a couple of seconds and just let it buzz. Now this is not loud, listen to this. So it's not loud at all. This is very, very gentle. Um, you know how they have like electric razors for humans? It is quieter than that. And so I let them hear it. I let them see it. I would turn it on and like let it sit on the floor because it would buzz so they would be aware of it. And then I gradually as they, you know, over over like two weeks or something, I would get it closer and closer to them and then touch it to their skin. Now, not the razor end. I would touch this side to it. So if this is their back... I would touch it to it so they would feel the vibrations. We're getting them used to the sensations. So I would just keep it near them so they were comfortable with it and then I would touch it to them. I would touch it to their back, to their sides, to their back legs. I'm gonna touch it to areas where we could potentially be using a razor in the future. So, and you're gonna wanna do this in slow increments. Do not just think you're gonna go over the entirety of your dog on the first one. You're not. I just want it near them and then let them watch it. If they can see what you're doing, that's going to be less scary than if you just randomly touch their back with it. So turn it on away from them and then let them watch you bring it up to part of their body. It can be their paw. It can be their back legs. It can be their side, but let them watch you. Now, in a lot of cases, if you just kind of hold it for your dog, they're going to start to sniff it and their noses will touch it. So they're going to kind of feel those vibrations first. Do it on your dog's schedule. We are not we're not forcing anything on your dogs. Take it very slow in very small, short, little teeny tiny steps and build up their tolerance. So as you are then touching it to it, hold it there a little bit longer. Just hold it in place for three seconds, hold it in place for five seconds, and then turn it off. You're done. You can keep building up until you can run the side of the device over their backs. Again, we're not actually cutting any of their fur. We're just moving the device over their back so that they understand those sensations. Now, I told you I really heavily lean into trimming paw pads with this um, and in general. I think it's so important. So I would, after that point, I would flip my dog over on their back and I would have it near their feet. And so I am, and you can do this in different ways. I started out by having my dogs in my arms like a baby and then I would hold their paw with one hand and I would just, again, like this, touch that back to it and I would allow them to feel the sensations and then we built up to actually trimming some of that fur off. Now that gets really scary. I will tell you, the first time I trimmed my dog's paws, they were terrified. It was a little bit of a struggle. And so I would do just a little bit and I would hold them and I would soothe them and I'd take care of them. We, we didn't push it. We never pushed them beyond their boundaries. So we give them time to see if they're willing to accept more of it. And then we build up to where we can actually do their feet. The first time I did this, it was not great. It was not fun. So then the next time it was much easier because my girls were now used to it. We were now aware of what was going on. So the first time, if you have like a tragic experience, just know that that is likely that is something that is probably going to happen because they haven't actually had their fur trimmed yet. And that's a different sensation than just feeling the vibrations from the razor. That is actually moving that fur off of their body. It's going to tickle. It's, it's going to be weird. It's going to be uncomfortable and they're not going to love it. So little bits at a time until they're comfortable with it. And from there, you can then go longer periods of time. You can do more and you're just going to have to try and find out what works best for your dog. Sometimes they are going to want to be in your arms cradled like a baby and you hold on to their legs. Sometimes they are going to want to be on their back for this. There's a lot of different options for how you are going to be continuing to groom them. For some little dogs, you may even want one of those little slings, but the goal here is to get them to give you their paws and to not 
be frustrated or scared or pull against you. Now, my dogs, I have two bigger dogs, two English French Spaniels and a Paparini into a little dog. And I groom them by holding them. I do not put anybody in a sling. I don't have to ask them to give me their hand. I do it upside down. So I'll either have them on their backs in between my legs and I just kind of stabilize them so they're not rolling one way or the other. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take care of that. The other way is to have them in my arms like a baby and I'll just hold on to their feet. If you have more than one person that can help with this, by all means, go for that. That makes it a lot easier. If one person can hold the dog, the other person can groom the dog. But you are just building up to the point where it gets really easy. I will tell you, like I said, the first time, traumatic for all involved. Second time, kind of difficult. We had we had one that was okay, one that was a little bit chaotic. It wasn't great. I had to kick everyone and everything out of the room and then she was perfectly fine. And after that, perfect angels because they had gone through the experience. We built it up and they became more comfortable with it. And now they don't fuss at all. If I tell them I need to groom them, they come over, they sit down, I flip them over and we go ahead and we take care of their feet. Same thing goes with trimming nails. You're not going to do it until you absolutely have to. And I know it's terrifying, especially if those nails are black. Oh, it is the most terrifying thing that I've ever been through in my life. My little dog has white nails. You can see through to the quick, so you're not going to cut it. One of my Springer has some white nails, some black nails, so I can kind of tell and then guess on the rest. But my other Springer has like one white nail. It is a terrifying experience for me. So talk to your vet. Your vet will be able to show you. A groomer will be able to show you. It's still terrifying. I'm still terrified, but I do the best that I can. And you're just going to get them used to this. So whatever clipper you want to use, get that. I do recommend something kind of like this that just kind of clips like this. I like the metal ones as opposed to the plastic ones. The, the ones that they have in the stores now are not great. I've had this one since my childhood dog, actually. And this is an amazing nail clipper. You just put their little nail through it and then you just clip right up there little bits at a time until you get down to that little point, that little uh, quick that's going to start to show and you stop from there. But again, check with somebody who's a professional. I am not a professional. And you're just going to have this near them and you're just going to move it. You're just going to move it. You can kind of hear the hinge squeaking. So that's what it's going to sound like to the dogs. Have it near their paws, fake trim those nails until they're comfortable with it. Then put a nail through it, but don't actually clip anything because little itty bitty babies, we don't do that to them, right? But just put their nail through it so they feel the sensations until you then have to actually clip those nails. When you're going to be doing it, they will panic the first time. You know how it works. So you're going to want to make sure that you're just doing like maybe one and leaving it. I heard a really great tip from somebody on TikTok the other day. They said, there's no reason to have to trim all of your dog's nails at once. If your dog doesn't like it, do one a day until they're all clipped. And then you just start the process over again so that it, by the time you get to that last nail, the first nail needs to be clipped again. So you can do something like that. If your dogs are trained like my dogs are and they don't mind it, you can do it all at once. Um, and then you're just going to want to be mindful of how often you need to be doing that. You're just getting them prepared from the squeaking noises and having it near to the sensation of putting the nail through and not clipping it to the actual clip of those nails and then building it up from there until they are comfortable with how you are going to be grooming them. So we start off with the baby products. We are just teaching them how to be brushed, how to be groomed. We're going to teach them about the razors and how it's going to vibrate and how it's going to work on their fur. We're going to teach them about clipping their nails so that they're ready for that. And then, of course, you can do similar things with some of the other grooming aspects as well, starting off very, very small, very easy and building up from there. Again, my dogs with the grooming process learned very quickly. So because I started from a very young age, by the time we got around to actually needing to do that, we only had to experience it in real life twice before I had perfect angels moving forward. And they haven't struggled or stressed out at all in months. It has been months of them being really well behaved. And I am... um I'm trimming their paw pads once a week and I'm clipping their nails every two weeks, but it depends on your specific dog, your specific dog breed. Talk to your vet, talk to your groomer. They will know better than you or I, unless you've done your research. And that's going to allow you to help introduce them to these things well before they are actually going to need them in their life so that it makes it easier on you, easier on them. And there is no struggle or stress or fighting when they get older and they actually need to be groomed properly. Again, different breeds have different time frames for these. So do the research on your breed. If you have some kind of mix, talk to a groomer, talk to a vet to find out what the, you know, the main things in your dog is and look for information on that. That's going to help you out. Questions on how to get your puppies ready to transition into adult doghood? 
go ahead and drop those down below. I'm a pet parent of a long time and we love having guests on the show to bring you information. So if I don't have information, we'll bring in an expert to make sure that we are getting those questions answered for you. And we'll see you in the upcoming episodes as we continue to help you live out your best dog parent life and give your puppy the best life they can have. We'll see you then.